Meg is here now with a look at sports and a big day for Canada, a new curling champion. Yes, and unfortunately, he's not from Alberta, but if you had to pick another province to win, there's nothing wrong with going with Manitoba. Jeff Stoughton, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. looking yeah, for yeah, a yeah, first yeah, win since 1999. Did he get them both? Yeah. There they go. Manitoba is your Canadian men's curling champion. Oh, it freaking feels awesome, I tell you. The guys played a great game. Johnny made a couple great run backs in the first few ends, and uh, we made every big shot out there that we need to make. I tell you, there's nothing better than this feeling right now. It sucks. It absolutely sucks. Are you kidding me? That's, uh, what's that, seven times now? <laughs> I hate it. I absolutely hate it. It's, uh, I, I don't have any fun coming second. That's right. They are now Team Canada. They will be at the Four Worlds in Regina. Congratulations to Manitoba. Meantime, bronze are bust for the Martin Rink, minus Kennedy that is, but there's fifth De Dustin Ekstrand and the guys not really too pumped to be here. Kevin Martin couldn't even curl 70% today trying to bump the yellow and raise his own to the forefoot. Nope, he's offline and just the one. Team Alberta just kind of going through the motions. Here's Martin and Hebert setting up a shot. Oh, serious? Feel the guard isn't horrible. I don't care, whatever. This is whether he can bump it. And Hebert actually pulls off the shot, had him giggling afterwards. Not much pressure today. Shot of the day belonged to Brad Gushu, though. Check this out in the fourth. He splits the reds, and then he spills a third Alberta stone. He actually could have got all four. 5 3 Newfoundland at the break. Martin Hammer in six, attempting the long, long run back. But that's not happening here. Gushu steals one and was up 6-3 in the battle for bronze. It thankfully came to an end in the eighth. Gushu coming up big. Takeout will count four. And Alberta will be coming home without a medal. As for Gushu, he says goodbye to longtime teammate Mark Nichols. They're just my friends. Um, we've, we've been through so much. and uh, Oh, sorry. So Newfoundland gets third, Alberta a hard-to-believe fourth. Here's Adam Cook. Thank you very much, Meg. The briar ends on another sour note for Alberta. There was a bronze medal on the line for the first time in 10 grand, but neither team seemed very interested. Basically a meaningless exhibition as far as the players are concerned. They had more fun than expected, but Kevin Martin was still thinking about Saturday's loss. To lose yesterday, a real tough one. And then and, and come play this is just it's just uh, it's really it's, it's not a little embarrassing I don't know if that's right but not necessary we're used to losing a little bit more than they are I guess <laughs> well, the fans liked it and there were some good shots made for TV so whatever we'll go through the motions on the bright side Alberta's fifth Dustin Ekstrand got to play in his first full Briar game because Mark Kennedy flew home to be with his wife who was expected to give birth today. It was a thrill for the Sedgwick native. Had a lot of fun with him. It was great. Like for a fifth man to get out and play a full game in front of that crowd and on national TV is just great. Overall, it was a tumultuous week for T. Martin at the Briar. The rink that won virtually everything over the last three years struggled in London, especially the skip and the third, John Morris. Neither of us really played not bad, but not, not good. Just kind of, you know, mediocre and uh, you don't win at that. You, you learn a lot more from your losses than you do from your wins, and we got to, uh, you know, we got to have that mentality and really, um, you know, work harder going forward here. By the way, Mark Kennedy and Ben Hebert were named first team All Stars at the Briar. Little consolation for the first time in four years, an Alberta team does not win the Canadian Championship, and the Martin Rink has little time to regroup. Their next major event is the Players Championship in Grand Prairie in mid-April. Reporting from the 2011 Briar in London, Ontario, Adam Cook. CTV Sports. And guess who touched down back in Edmonton in about the fifth end? Mark Kennedy flown home in Bruce Saville's private jet. You know, I feel for my teammates having to play in that game. They obviously don't really want to, but you know, I'm sure they'll put on a good show. The game's going on behind us. I feel like I'm kind of missing out and having to leave my teammates in the middle of an event. I've never done that before, but uh, you know, it's nice to be home. I think it's important that I'm here. After a very quick glance at the TV, Mark was off to be with Nicole, who's expected to de deliver their second child, a girl, at any time. Heading home. Um, you know, as far as I know, she's doing okay. Today's the due date, so I'm sure it'll be today or tomorrow. And so just landed, just going to go home and see how she's doing and, uh, you know, get back to real life. Nice to be home. We will pass on any baby news as soon as possible.
The CTV Curling Report, sponsored by Horse Racing Alberta, proud contributors to the Alberta Lottery Fund. Oilers are back home with three points out of ten from that nasty road trip. Finishing up in Pittsburgh today, Ryan Jones finds Linus Omark on the wing. He squeezes through the D-men, but he can't beat the post. Less than a minute to go in the first, Tyler Kennedy finds Chris Kunitz on the far side. A backhander past Dubnik, 1-0 Pens. Edmonton outshot 13-2 in the first, but whatever Tom Rennie said in the dressing room must have worked. Gilbert Brule and Linus Omark with two great chances here. Then Max Talbot takes a bank pass off the boards and he finds some open ice all alone on Dubnik. He slides it past Pittsburgh up by two. Oilers just finished killing off a penalty when the Penguins strike again. Dubnik gets a piece of Jordan Stahl's shot, but it just trickles through. Make that a 3-0 lead. Third period, the best oiler of late, Ryan Jones, the man with the flow, bangs in Andrew Cogliano's rebound, his 16th, 3-1. The comeback is short-lived when Zabinik Mahalik slaps it home. He beats Dubnik 4-1 now. Scary moment here. Magnus Piarvi slaps it right off Sean Horkoff's ankle. Yikes. Then Gilbert Brule frustrated lays a huge hit on Chris Letang. He got a charging penalty for that. And on the power play, Pittsburgh adds one more courtesy Chris Kunitz. 5-1 in the final. Major midget playoffs. Leduc Oil Kings trying to finish off Sherwood Park. Bodies were flying everywhere. Talk about hard to the net, or at least a cartwheel, from Bowen Croft right over goalie Kyle Hines. 3-1 Park when Captain Riley Kaiser starts flying around the D, and he takes out the poor water bottle even. Pretty goal. It's 4-1. Now 5-1 Kings when Liam McAllister goes to work. Dandy Deke around the two D-men. He sets up Brett Rossi, and he goes straight to his buddies in the body paint. Sherwood Park still kicking Game 5 Thursday in Leduc. And AJHL playoffs, the Camrose Kodiaks were facing elimination but pulled off a huge win tonight at home. 5-1 over the Bandits. Game 7 goes Tuesday in Brooks. WHL Red Deer Rebels in Calgary tonight. 2-0 Hitman. Ryan Nugent Hopkins wide open in front. He gets the puck rolling for the Rebels. His 102nd point for to the final. And it's very likely the Rebels will face the Oil Kings in the first round of the playoffs. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay.